This is a quick and dirty video of the everyday carry items that I have typically on my person. The things that I carry the most and my newest items. I decided to go with this format just to do something a little different. I gotta take my knife text to do this so I'm happy to share with you today. Since I'm doing this for knife tech, let's start with knives. And my most carried knife is the Small Sapenza 21. This is just a perfect everyday carry knife. No surprise there. Incredible blade shape, great pocket clip, S35 VN steel. About a little under 3 inches for blade length, and it is just fantastic to carry. It's basically like an old pair of jeans. The more that I use them, uh, the more I enjoy them. Just a fantastic knife. Really nice. My newest knife for everyday carry is the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 and this one is a sprint run with carbon fiber scales as you can see and S90V steel. This is a pretty rare one. They only made 300 of these and this is actually a factory second. I got this from a guy who picked this up at the Spyderco factory second sale. You can see the blem right there on the blade, just a little neck. S90V is basically an exotic steel with a high vanadium content, so it's got really good wear resistance. The carbon fiber scales go well with it. It's got great torsional rigidity compared to other paramilitary twos. Up next, of course, are my watches. And what we've got here is the Hamilton Khaki Mechanical. I love this watch. Been so happy with it. It's been incredibly reliable and comfortable to wear. It's uh, nice and thin, 40 millimeters. It's on this great Hodinkee Shell Cordovan strap. Probably be doing a review of this strap just because it's so amazing. I think these Hamilton watches are great strap watches, really versatile. You can switch it up if you want to. Some come with great bracelets as well. Up next is my newest watch. This is the Omega Speedmaster Professional Mark II. Did a review of this one already. You might want to check that out. It's got an amazing vintage caliber 861 movement. Really a pleasure to operate and a really neat watch with an interesting story. The pen that I carry the most is the Boker Plus 50 Cal. This is a bolt action pen, really nice size, not too long for a bolt action pen. It runs a Parker style refill and uh, the action was really snappy when I got it, but it has broken in and it is nice to use. Just a very compact pen. My newest pen is the Tactile Turn Shaker, highly recommended by Anthony Scalambrini at Everyday Commentary. This one has a Schmidt Easy Flow 3000 refill and it is just a great writer. Nice clicky and overall just very high quality pen. Up next for a flashlight is another very affordable choice. This is my most carried flashlight still, the tiny little Energizer LED. My philosophy for flashlights is that all the technologies trickle down and so I look for the best flashlight for the least money. And right now the uh, newest flashlight I have is an excellent example of one that is very cheap. For 25 bucks, you get a, a Nichia 219 emitter. This is the Eagle Tech D25 AAA. It's got a magnetic tail cap. It stands, a twisty, a high lumage of 145 lumens at the most. It's really a pretty powerful little light. I don't normally carry multi-tools, but when I do, I carry a really little one. And this Victorinox SA is probably one of the longest standing pieces of gear that I regularly carry. I've had this easily for 10 years. You can see the blade's all dirty because I was just using it recently to cut some food or something. And has a, just a very simple set of tools, but it is perfect to go in the bottom of your pocket. These uh, scissors are pretty much worn out. That's one thing that I wish they would improve. But you can easily put it on a keychain too and not even notice that it's there. Way overlooked, but just an amazing item. My newest multi-tool is the Leatherman Style PS. I got this basically so that I could have a small multi-tool with the pliers in my rotation. It doesn't have a blade, but that doesn't really matter because I almost always have a folding knife with me. I really like the integrated carabiner. It just gets on the keychain really easily. Uh, the build quality on this I thought was fantastic. I think I paid about 20 bucks for this, and uh, the set of tools is also very useful. Uh, it's got a uh, nice little small screwdriver and uh, a, a rough um, uh, fingernail sanding thing there. And it's got an excellent pair of scissors. These scissors are uh, have a much better design in the spring and it's airline compliant. Okay, so I mentioned my keys. Here is my key setup. I've got a key smart with three keys in it. I think that this is a perfect setup for someone who wants to have a little bit more organization with their keys. Honestly, I feel a little OCD with this thing. It just doesn't matter to me with only three keys to have them that organized. I have my Pangea pocket clip thingy. This is basically a bottle opener and pocket clip. And I have that on a metal corded 
thing here, basically just, um, it's a nice modular setup. So if I want to throw on my little Energizer micro LED or like say this uh, Leatherman style PS, I have uh, still a pretty compact setup in the pockets. You know, if you uh, flip things around here, move them around, imagine it's in my pockets here. The Pangea clip is fairly discreet. It's dark, so it won't like stand out with a pair of jeans and uh, everything sits pretty neatly. Another important piece of gear, this is my Magpul iPhone case. I'm filming on my iPhone, so obviously you're not going to see that. This has held up amazingly well and is the only phone case I use these days. Up next is my Saddleback Leather ID card wallet. Basically, it's got an open slot for an ID card as well as two credit card slots and a cash slot. There is another hidden slot behind the ID card area. I found the chestnut leather on this wall to be really top quality. All the stitching is amazing. It's got a 100-year warranty, so I'm confident it's going to hold it very well. I usually carry that in my front pocket. Up next is the only pry tool that I regularly carry. This is a Casey Lynch pry tool. He sent this to me for review. It's basically a prototype, and he did a beautiful flame adenized job on it. It's got a nice deep carry clip. Compared to the smaller multi-tools that I usually carry, it's set up for, for more robust prying tasks. Of course, it's got a bottle opener on it too. Really nice ergonomics, really good size. You know, I often carry this with my small Sabenza just so that I have two titanium toys to play with. <laughs> and uh, these, these pry tools are kind of bordering on a fad right now. But this one is a really high quality one and I will probably be doing a video on that. This is an example of a common work setup that you'll see if, for example, you're following me on Instagram. I'll have this little guy. This is an Alox. USB stick, 16 gigs, and it's often uh, good for me to just have a USB stick with my work. I often have a Burt's Bees just because um, it's winter. What's the next tool? We've got my favorite tool, my Sig Sauer P938. This is the Equinox, which has uh, work done by the Custom Shop. Great subcompact 9mm, beautifully finished gun. I've been really proud to own this gun. It is just a fantastic, fantastic little firearm. I usually carry it with a Nate Squared tactical holster. Not the prettiest holster by far. And as you can see, it's uh, been taking on some wear. But it just disappears inside the waistband. I usually carry this uh, appendix carry inside the waistband. And it is a very comfortable setup. This is the only gun I carry regularly enough that I would consider it an EDC choice. Up next is my vintage Peterson's Caput. It has a beautiful curly briar bowl, and it is just a really nice pipe, really a pleasure to smoke. Got a little Zippo that my brother gave me for his wedding. Uh, it's a nice size, a little smaller than your standard Zippo, and uh, has some nice engraving. Just a kind of a classy little item. If I'm smoking a pipe, might as well have a nice looking lighter. And just a very basic tool. I found these basic simple tools are the best. They hold up real well and you don't feel bad if you lose them. Just an overall kind of a fun fun thing to do maybe if I'm carrying something on the weekend. You know, I think that the whole like tin survival kit thing is kind of a fad. But I do carry this, an all-purpose little med kit, when I'm with my kids. Basically at the playground, just want to have some band-aids on my person. It's a good choice. And didn't have to spend any time setting it up. So basically there you go. I can set up any number of one of these things, uh, any combinations. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll often see me changing things up. This is just a fraction of the stuff that I carry, but it is my favorites or my newest. This has been more of a show and tell than a deep EDC philosophy video, but I would have to say that the things that I consider disposable, like a lot of the stuff on my keychain, are disposable because there's prospects of me losing my keys or something happening to them and I don't want to have a lot of investment in them. But the things that I really consider important, my watches or my knives, or even spending a little bit more on a wallet, these are things that it's going to be worth spending a little time researching and maybe spending the money on things that you'll really love. Well, if you made it this far, thanks a lot. And I've got a little bonus item for you. This is a Bradley Mountain Wax Canvas Gear Roll. I got this from Huckberry, and it's basically an alternative to the tactical Maxpedition style gear carrier thing. It's great for casual travel when I've got maybe a duffel bag of clothes and a dot bag, but nothing self-contained for my EDC stuff. It's handmade, very high quality, and just the right size. 
like I mentioned, you can check my Instagram out if you're interested in seeing more of what's in my rotation. Thanks a lot for watching. If you're interested in any of these gear items, I did list what they are in the description. And I did also provide a link to any video reviews I've done. Please consider subscribing if you're interested in seeing a review of any of the things that I have not yet reviewed. And make sure to let me know what you'd like to see a review of in the comments below.